Your life's going to be in danger every minute of that time, even in this house, in the street, everywhere. Hello, viewers. Welcome back to Vintage TV. In today's video, we explore the stories of 10 more of the worst drug addicts in Hollywood history, uncovering the stories that rocked Tinseltown. But before we jump into the spotlight, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our fascinating content. All right, let's get started. Number 10. Errol Flynn You might remember him as the dashing buckler on screen, but there was a lot more going on behind the scenes than meets the eye. So here's the scoop. Flynn found himself in the midst of a scandal that would make headlines today. Accusations of taking advantage of teenage girls were splashed all over the media. And guess what? Fans didn't really change their view of their idol. But this mess took a toll on Flynn himself. Stress? Check. Heavy drinking? Check. Drugs? Oh yeah. Flynn dived headfirst into vitamin injections mixed with morphine. As if that wasn't enough, his film career was hitting a rough patch. Critics were handing out bad reviews like candy, and his roles outside the action hero realm were tanking at the box office. Flynn's drinking? Legendary. He'd inject alcohol into oranges and snack on them on set. Creative, right? But that wasn't all. Heroin addiction joined the party a few years later. He went from Hollywood heartthrob to a real handful to work with. Poor Warner Brothers had to wave the white flag and call it quits on their partnership. Number 9. Jeff Conaway Now let's turn our attention to Jeff Conaway, a familiar face from the hit TV show Taxi and the iconic movie Grease. Conaway's life was a roller coaster ride of fame, addiction, and heartbreak. Jeff Conaway's struggle with cocaine addiction spanned a staggering four decades. Known for his charismatic roles on screen, Conaway battled inner demons that would eventually overshadow his talent. Despite his public persona, his journey was fraught with pain and turmoil. While battling addiction, he often expressed his desire to free himself from its clutches, revealing a determination to overcome it. Tragically, Conaway's fight came to an end in a Los Angeles area hospital. Falling into a coma from a possible overdose of prescription medication, the actor's life hung in the balance. At 60 years old, Conaway's battle reached a heartbreaking conclusion, with his family making the difficult decision to take him off life support. Conaway's struggle was an open book. In 2008, he bravely joined VH1's Celebrity Rehab, where he candidly admitted his addiction to cocaine, alcohol, and painkillers. He also shared painful experiences from his past, including childhood sexual abuse and his codependent relationship with his then-girlfriend, Vicky Lizzie. While his efforts were commendable, Conaway's journey through rehabilitation was far from straightforward. He left rehab before completion and, upon returning home, was seen resorting to painkillers. As the curtain fell on his life, conflicting reports emerged about the circumstances of his hospitalization. While some attributed it to an overdose, celebrity rehab's Dr. Drew Pinsky asserted that Conaway's health struggles were related to pneumonia and sepsis, rather than a drug-related incident. According to Pinky on his HLN channel show, Dr. Drew, prescribing opiates to addicts like Conaway is going to kill him. I guess it's not such a coincidence, huh? Especially since I cruise the theater district a lot, hoping to meet someone like you. Number 8. Dennis Quaid With his neighborly charm and seemingly wholesome lifestyle, Quaid might be the last person you'd expect to have a dark chapter in his past. However, the Hollywood lights cast a shadow over his life, leading him down a perilous path of cocaine addiction. Dennis Quaid's journey into the world of addiction began during the vibrant era of the 80s, a time known for its excesses and indulgences. In his own words, Quaid confesses, I was basically doing cocaine pretty much on a daily basis during the 80s. It was impossible for him to resist the allure of the cocaine bandwagon. As the 80s roared on, Quaid's reliance on cocaine grew alarmingly intense. It reached a point where he would spend nights screaming at God, pleading for deliverance from the shackles of addiction. The weight of his dependency was suffocating and he envisioned a grim future where he was either facing death or losing everything dear to him. The turning point when Quaid hit rock bottom, pushed to the edge by his cocaine-fueled lifestyle. By 1987, as he starred in The Big Easy, his life was a chaotic whirlwind, surviving on just one hour of sleep each night. 
He even humorously quips that cocaine expenses were occasionally slipped into movie budgets. Realization dawned on Quaid and in 1990 he made a courageous decision to seek help. Admitting his struggle to his then wife Meg Ryan, he took the pivotal step of checking into rehab for cocaine addiction. This marked a turning point in his life, although the journey ahead wouldn't be easy. That was the end of the love affair with me and cocaine, Quaid said, and by the look of things, he hasn't turned back since. Number 7. Robin Williams The world knew him as the comedic genius who could light up any room with his laughter. But behind the scenes, Robin Williams was grappling with his own demons, cocaine and alcohol addiction. In the early years of his career, Williams' ascent into stardom was marred by a tumultuous relationship with cocaine and alcohol. However, a tragic turning point came in 1980, with the death of his close friend and fellow comedian John Belushi, due to a cocaine and heroin overdose. The death of Belushi served as a signal for Williams to end his dangerous dance with substances. But the battle was far from over. Robin Williams, the man who could effortlessly make others laugh, was wrestling with his inner demons. Alcohol became a sporadic companion in his life, casting shadows over his journey to recovery. His struggles became part of his stand-up routine, a courageous act of vulnerability that allowed audiences to see the raw reality behind the laughter. In a candid 2006 interview with Diane Sawyer, Williams shared a profound insight into the nature of addiction. It's not caused by anything, it's just there, he revealed. The insidious nature of addiction lies in its ability to lay dormant, waiting for a moment of vulnerability to strike. Williams likened it to a lurking predator pouncing when you least expect it. He humorously mused. Then you realize, where am I? I didn't realize I was in Cleveland. Despite his valiant efforts, the battle took its toll. On August 11, 2014, the world was stunned by the news of Robin Williams' unexpected death. He said, My battles with addiction definitely shaped how I am now. They really made me deeply appreciate human contact and the value of friends and family. How precious that is. I don't care if. Oh, no, no, she lit up the room. Number six, Gig Young. Hollywood can be a glittering world where dreams come true. But there are stories that remind us that fame and acclaim can't always protect us from the darkness within. Gig Young, an Academy Award-winning actor, walked a precarious tightrope between success and self-destruction until that fateful day when the final act played out in a chilling tragedy. Gig Young, born Byron Barr, etched his name into a cinematic history with his portrayal of the heartless marathon dance MC in the haunting 1969 film They Shoot Horses, Don't They? alongside stars like Jane Fonda and Michael Sarazin. The spotlight showered him with an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, and yet beneath the glittering facade a storm was brewing. Alcohol and pills like relentless shadows gradually engulfed Young's life, casting an ominous haze over his promising career. A pivotal moment arrived on the set of the comedy classic Blazing Saddles, where Young's addiction manifested in a tragic collapse on his very first day of shooting. Director Mel Brooks, recognizing the gravity of the situation, was left with no choice but to sever ties with the once promising star. Young fell into a cycle of dependency as the tranquilizer Valium entwined its tendrils around his life. Seven pills a day chased down by the numbing embrace of alcohol became his harrowing routine. Yet remarkably, he continued to work, even making an indelible mark in the iconic Twilight Zone episode Walking Distance where he ventured back to his hometown and encountered his youthful self. But amidst the glitz and glamour, a somber finale awaited. On that fateful October afternoon in 1978, tragedy struck. In his Manhattan apartment, Gig Young turned a 38 caliber snub-nosed revolver against the back of his newly wed wife's head, shattering their lives in an instant. The same gun then claimed his own life, leaving a void in the realm of Hollywood. Speculation swirled around whether it was a heart-wrenching suicide pact or a chilling act of murder-suicide. There were no farewell words, no explanations, just the cold silence of Suite 1BB in the Osborne Apartments on West 57th Street in New York City. Number 5. Tallulah Bankhead In the golden age of Hollywood, where stars dazzled on and off the silver screen, Tallulah Bankhead was a name that epitomized the allure and recklessness of the era. A wild child of the South, she left her Alabama home at a mere 15 years old, embarking on a journey to fame that would become a whirlwind of audacious excess and a tumultuous relationship with substances. 
Bankhead's journey led her to the prestigious Algonquin Hotel, a hub of New York's high society, a place where literary giants and socialites mingled. Here, her audacious partying thrust her into the spotlight, rubbing shoulders with the likes of Dorothy Parker, George S. Kaufman, and Robert Benchley. Yet her hedonistic tendencies prompted the quip from the hotel's owner, Frank Case, that he couldn't simultaneously manage the hotel and attend to Lulu's escapades. As her star ascended, Bankhead's cocktail of choices expanded. From rapid-fire consumption of whiskey to audacious mixtures like Coca-Cola and spirits of ammonia, she embraced a life of audacious indulgence. With roles on Broadway and in iconic films like Alfred Hitchcock's Lifeboat, she juggled a life that seemed to blur the lines between fiction and reality. Her vibrant beauty and charisma gradually dimmed under the weight of her vices. Unfazed by her fading health, she clung to the thrill of excess, consuming over a quart of bourbon daily, mingled with a chaotic concoction of both legal and not-so-legal pills, as well as cocaine. Yet the tale of Tallulah Bankhead, like all grand narratives, has found its climax. Her final act was a testament to the ravages of her choices. Her last words, immortalized in infamy, echoed the siren call of her existence. Codeine. Bourbon. Monte Carlo. Honeymoon. Hooray! Number 4. Montgomery Clift Meet Montgomery Clift, a heartthrob whose life took a dramatic turn after a fateful night out with none other than the legendary Elizabeth Taylor. Picture this, 1956 Clift's car hugging a telegraph pole like it's a long-lost friend. And who swoops in to save the day? Elizabeth Taylor herself, climbing into the wreckage like a real-life superhero. Now you'd think surviving a car crash would be the kind of stuff that only makes a star shine brighter, right? Well, not quite. Clift's near-death experience left him not only battling physical pain, but also dealing with the loss of his delicate features. Taylor put it best, saying it took away the delicacy but not the beauty. Think of it like a sculptor giving his masterpiece a rugged twist. Despite his altered appearance, Clift wasn't one to back down. He snagged his fourth Oscar nomination for his role in Judgment at Nuremberg. And get this, the dude was already dealing with addiction, struggling to remember lines like there were keys he kept misplacing. But director Stanley Kramer turned it around, telling Clift to embrace the chaos and weave it into his character. And boy, did he deliver! That courtroom scene, pure gold. But here's the kicker. Hollywood stores started closing on Cliff post-accident. His looks changed, his painkiller dance took a toll, and he found himself on the unemployable list. Yet he pushed on, starring alongside legends like Clark and Marilyn Monroe in The Misfits. It's like a swan song, a last hurrah for a fading era. In a somber New York apartment, Cliff leaves us at the age of 45. Number 3. Michael Jackson All right, gather round for a tale that's both heartbreaking and caught. We're diving into the life of none other than the king of pop, Michael Jackson. Now, you might think his life was all moonwalks and glittering gloves, but behind the scenes, a different story was unfolding. Picture this. Jackson, addicted to barbiturates, battling insomnia with hefty doses of a surgical anesthetic called propofol. Sounds like a dangerous dance, right? Well, that dance ended tragically in 2009 when Jackson overdosed and left us all stunned. But let's rewind a bit. Addiction expert Dr. Petros Levunas spilled the beans during an ongoing lawsuit filed by Jackson's family against concert promoter AG Live. He revealed that Jackson's struggle with substances was more intense than we knew, even hidden from those around him. It was like a secret he was keeping from the world. Now the thing is, Jackson's family countered this, claiming that his addiction wasn't such a secret after all. Remember back in 93 when he cut short his dangerous tour to tackle his painkiller dependency in rehab? Yeah, not exactly a private matter. Levunas himself agreed. At that point, Jackson wasn't exactly playing it low-key. But here's the real kicker. Jackson's death wasn't due to opioids despite his history with painkillers. The culprit was propofol, administered by Dr. Conrad Murray to help with his insomnia. Murray gave him that anesthetic for 60 nights straight. The result? Tragedy. Levunas went on to explain how addiction messes with the brain by saying that a chemical hijacks the pleasure-reward pathways. And get this, friends, he added that a person will likely be addicted the rest of their life. But there's more, Levunas said. A very close friendship between an addicted patient and a doctor is problematic. It makes it much easier for a patient to ask for drugs and it makes it more difficult for a provider to resist. Number 2. Elizabeth Taylor you're about to get a glimpse into the life of one of Hollywood's finest actresses, Elizabeth Taylor. 
She dazzled on screen, but behind the scenes, her battles with drugs and alcohol were the stuff of legend. Picture this, three doctors, 1,000 prescriptions, and a whopping 28 controlled substances. Yep, that was the scene for Elizabeth Taylor. Back in the 90s, news hit that Taylor's doctors were overprescribing her meds left and right, from pain relief to sleeping aids. And this wasn't a one-time thing. She'd been dealing with this stuff since the 60s. The lady herself came clean about her addiction to sleeping pills and painkillers in the early 80s. She even had a hospital stint for a staphylococcus pneumonia, possibly triggered by a mix of alcohol and prescription sleep aid. The struggles seemed to intertwine with her marriages, especially with Richard Burton, who had his own battles with the bottle. In the 90s, the whole prescription frenzy came under the spotlight and Taylor's doctors got reprimanded for their role. This wasn't your typical case of, oops, I took too many pills. Nope, this was a full-blown pattern of overprescribing at multiple pharmacies. But it gets darker. Taylor's son, Andrew Wilding, spilled the beans on how deep her addiction ran. He walked into a room to find her with a syringe of Demerol, a powerful painkiller. When Wilding refused to give his mother the shot, her son recalled in Brower's book. She looked at me with deadened yet disappointed eyes, took a breath, steadied her hand, and plunged the needle into her flesh. By the 80s, Taylor hit rock bottom. She was in rehab not once, but twice. And despite kicking the booze, she held onto those pills like they were life jackets. Her struggles remained constant from the 60s to the 90s. Even after rehab, it was a bumpy ride. She battled congestive heart failure and left us in 2011. Number 1. Cary Grant All right, film buffs, buckle up for a wild ride down the rabbit hole of Hollywood history. We all know Cary Grant as the dashing lead man, but did you know he had a secret psychedelic side? Yeah, Cary Grant, the LSD explorer before it was cool. In the day, Grant's image was squeaky clean, the epitome of the non-controversial Hollywood star. But guess what? Behind the scenes, he was diving headfirst into the world of LSD, years before the summer of love hit hate Atbury. So how did it all start? Well, it was his wife, Betsy Drake, who introduced him to the wonders of LSD. In 1958, he began attending weekly LSD therapy sessions, all done under psychiatric supervision. The aim? Sorting out some personal demons, particularly about his mom. And you know what? It worked like a charm. Grant started singing praises about LSD. He happily spoke about the drug in interviews at the time, claiming it worked. At last, I'm close to happiness. Hold on, it gets even more intense. Cary Grant shared his LSD dreams with the world. I imagined myself as a giant penis, launching off from Earth like a spaceship. And he was so enthusiastic about it that he even inspired the famous Timothy Leary, the guru of all things psychedelic, to give it a shot. Rumor has it that Grant took LSD about a hundred times over three years. Now here's the kicker. During this LSD exploration phase, he was making some of his biggest movies like North by Northwest and Charade. Back then, LSD research was in full swing, but it took a nosedive in the late 60s when the government slammed the brakes on it. Fast forward to today and research on psychedelics is making a comeback with potential benefits for PTSD, depression, and more. Suddenly, Grant's LSD escapades don't sound that crazy after all. Okay, Ned. And take your hat. Okay, hat. Here's the end of it. Thank you for joining us on this journey into Hollywood's hidden struggles. If you're hungry for more intriguing stories, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more juicy stories.